first piece we'll be talking about takes place in the Viceroyalty of Peru, and I've just included a map just to show you what the Viceroyalty used to look like before. So it used to be all of this green area. Of course, with um, the Portuguese arriving, um, things kind of start changing, but um, the Americas used to be controlled by what were called Viceroyalties. Um, and I'm kind of going to go, we're starting kind of out of order chronologically, but um, we have um, New Spain, which is basically all of Mexico and Central America and includes the Philippines. I'm going to talk about that one in the next slide because of the order they're in. Um, and then we had um, the other one was uh, Peru at, one, at um, one point, which eventually got broken up into sub, sub vice royalties. The first piece we're talking about is, um, and I'm sorry this image is pixelated, I couldn't get a better uh, copy of it, um, is uh, Angel with Arquebus a Ciel Timor Dei. Um, it's a 17th century piece made by the Master of Calamarca of La Paz School, so the Lima Vice Royalty. Um, and we have a quite fashionably dressed angel, right? He does not look like the angels we're used to seeing. We're used to seeing um, them wearing robes or probably just a little loincloth and white, white wings. And here we're seeing a quite dapper angel armed with a harquebus, a long shotgun, pointed at we don't know really what to. Um, and he sounds almost contradictory, right? When we're thinking about him being so fashion forward, um, wielding some kind of a technologically advanced weapon at this time. He's very androgynous, or her. We don't actually know if it's male or female. I guess I said he because it is holding a weapon, and we tend to associate that <laughs> with men, right, rather than women. Um, the harquebus is a gun type um, that is produced um, by the Spaniards, so it's considered a technological piece, an advanced piece. Prior to the Spaniards' arrival to the Americas, there were no weapons like this, right? It is the Europeans who bring guns to the Americas. The Harkavis angel per se, this type of angel, um, is produced in, begins being produced around the 17th century into the 19th century in this region of the Americas, so we associate it with the vice royalty of Peru. Would you say it becomes a type? So this type of angel, so, yes. There's, there's this type that emerges in the region. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we, when you see this type of angel, you associate it with a specific region of the Americas. And, it's, and by type, we mean the, the androgynous, the fancy, fancy outfit. Yes, so the outfit will be making reference to regional um, royal outfits of Inca men. So painting-wise, they believe, it is believed by art historians, um, that it has both Flemish influence and Spanish influence. Um, at the time, we're going through recently the Counter-Reformation, and a lot of Catholics associate themselves with um, being like the army of God. Um, and so we're seeing um, this angel, possibly a protector of the people, right, with his, with his weapon. Um, he's identifiable to people regionally, right? So right now we're like, oh, we don't understand his clothing. What, what is he wearing? But in that region, people would have understood him to be wearing a, a, a royal, the outfit that a royal indigenous person would have been wearing. Now, the reason I ask that is because I'm looking at the pose and the, the red bows on the shoes and um, the pointed, mm -hmm. it's a lot like the Louis XIV. Right? Yes, he... And he looks like a, right, he, we think about royals, Dutch, Flemish, even French, right? He's very in fashion at the time, both in Europe and in the Americas. 
Um, so there are certain things that we see that we can connect with Europe. Yes. So, yes to both things. So the big hats, um, we do associate them with um, wealth in Europe. The feathers in the Americas would have been um, associated with um, priests or high royals, right? So it's, it would distinguish the average person, right, from someone higher ranking. So we're seeing this merging or hybrid object, right? We're seeing him becoming more Americanized in that sense, I guess. Um, in that we're seeing, yes, we're seeing European influence, but he's using um, culture and language from the Americas being incorporated within this, this, this angel. Let me see if I'm forgetting to say anything. Um, at the time, what is interesting is, is that um, the church had kind of been cracking down on angels. Um, and um, you could only have like the, the primary angel, so um, I guess Gabriel, um, et cetera, um, were the angels in Europe that weren't being accepted. Um, but in the Americas, there was a fascination by what is, I guess, considered apocryphal angels. So they were just like trying to dig up and discover all these fascinating angels. And so this is something that's exploding in the Americas, but not happening throughout Europe. So we're having a whole host of all sorts of um, angels being dug up in the Americas. They're very popular. Um, you had asked about the clothing, and I'm going to kind of backtrack a little bit. It is um, a uniquely American influenced by Europe, of course. Um, it is an Andean dress. I had said that we associate it with um, royals or aristocrats from the Incan lineage. And that's something we'll see um, in other pieces. Um, in, in the Americas, um, the indigenous people, if they had royal lineage, they were accepted um, up to a certain point. Um, and we'll see them wearing these really fancy, really beautiful um, European embroidered attires. And so we're. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I just missed the first part of that sentence. Did you just say the angels have association with royalty? Is that what you said? No, the people. The people. The people. Okay, the indigenous so five, people. Five year people. Yes. yes. So if you were of a royal lineage, if you were an indigenous person of royal lineage, you would be accepted at a higher level. Here, here we're seeing angels that I hadn't heard of before. <laughs> so in this case, we're seeing angel. This is angel Asiel. Yes, Timor Day means uh, fear of God. And so he's kind of a, a protector of God's army of people. <laughs> They're digging religious texts. Um, they're not necessarily considered right a main portion of the Bible. Um, is where they're finding um, these angels. I was going to say characters, but they're angels. From European translation. From European, yeah. They're also trying to, there is a heavy conversion period at this moment, right? The Europeans are trying to convert the indigenous people. So they're trying to figure out how to make their beliefs of interest um, to the people at the time. So a warrior angel would be interesting, right? And so they're trying to connect um, indigenous local beliefs with their Catholic beliefs. How do you entice someone to be interested in what you're trying to sell? At this point, they're not really selling. They're forcing, forcing it. Do we know who would do this then? Like, would this be in a church? Or would, would 
would people be able to view it, or is it more like a private collection? Probably, um, probably more within a church or more of a private space um, in the Americas at the beginning of um, um, the Christianizing movement. A lot of times, the indigenous people couldn't actually enter churches. Um, a lot of times, because you're not, you weren't baptized. Um, that has changed now. If you're baptized or not, you can go in. But at the beginning, if you weren't baptized, um, you, you wouldn't go in, or they would try to hold um, a different type of um, worship tradition that went more in sync with what people practiced locally. And that's kind of going, I'm not sure if I'm going off on that one. But in, but in Mexico, for example, they had open-air chapels, is what they called them. And they would actually worship outside because it, com it connected more with the local beliefs than being inside a building. Probably both or either one, yes. So what's interesting is that we're seeing, we're thinking about the Americans, and a lot of times we, we think of the Americas as being backwards, but we're seeing him very fashion, he's wearing a very fashion-forward, European-inspired attire. Because we usually think um, that things take longer to reach the Americas. Yes. So La Paz, La Paz School is like when they, you can't really say a specific person who did it, right? You know it belongs to the school of. Um, and it is believed that there were other, so we're only looking at one, but it's believed that there were other accompanying angels with maybe different either instruments or weapons. Um, so he would have been part of a larger set. And he's not the only, I mean, there are other examples of this type of um, angel with archivists. This, this is the one that got selected by us. At times, um, you'll see the, 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 um, the feathered wings are, are colorful. Um, a lot of times that was on purpose. They're trying to emulate um, plumage of local birds. Um, and at the time, right, for a European, that's very exotic, very beautiful. Um, they think about it as, as a miracle of God also, right? Look at these beautiful, exotic, different objects that we're discovering. Yeah, but when, I, when I think of angel wings, though, you know, the European angels all the way back to, you know, 1300s, the wings are also colorful. Yes. So I, I wonder, is there a connection to European plumage, or is that just something that we're linking it to when we get to America? Well, I mean, it, it would make reference to European plumage, but in the Americas, we're actually finding these really beautiful, exotic birds. And um, these color, the colorful plumage, I mean, birds were being raised for their feathers to be used during religious rituals, right? Cape, their, their whole feathered capes that we'll see within certain groups. I can talk a little, I mean, should I move on to the next one? Do we think we've covered enough on this one? So like I said, right, the, yeah. the hat and um, like Cheryl has noted, the, the shoes and the, and the tights and the um, bows look uh, very European. Um, this um, golden brocade um, was more associated with lo local attire, um, the big hat, kind of looks like something that would have been used in Holland or France at the time, um, but was also adopted locally um, by royals, and the feathers are associated um, with royal lineage within the Americas. Just one last one of the two ribbons that hang down, is that, is that like a sword? I've been wondering what those two ribbons are. I'm not sure about what those two ribbons are, and I need to look more into what the two ribbons are. This? Oh, there's that rope up there, but then there's these two really pretty ribbons here that I was also wondering what they were. So I'm going to look into that. Let me write myself a reminder note because I didn't do that. Um, and let me show you, actually, I had a close-up. And that's exactly the ribbon you were talking about, right? 
Yeah. And I'm not sure if it's just purely decorative. I mean, that's what I thought. But it might have an actual function. So here's a close-up of the, of the angel. And these really big, beautiful, flowy um, um, sleeves. And we associate excess of fabric with wealth, right? So he's showing, we're seeing that he's, he is wealth. He is, he is wealth, right? He is a soldier of God. Uh, Catholics love exploiting this, this wealth to show you their connection to God. I think you, I mean, I think you could think about it in that way, and it is, it's art, right? So there's not a single right or wrong way yeah. to discuss it, as long as you can kind of support that with what, what you're thinking. So I would say yes, although I think it would be more geared towards uh, wealthier, right. aristocratic, um, indigenous peoples rather than um, your average indigenous person. So was this created in Bolivia? Yes, this is, this is an American piece, like yes. This? Um, this is made by a school, um, there might have been natives working, um, there might have been mixed people working in there, um, there were natives that were trained, um, at some points, um, usually it's a European master. So the master, that's what you're asking about, the master of Count Marco would be a person of European or if it indigenous, I mean, indigenous people will be progressively more and more involved in production of, of artwork throughout the Americas. Great, next? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 